Apparently, WWE is in a new era. We kept hearing it the whole weekend at the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania Night 1, WrestleMania Night 2, even at the Raw after Mania. Are we in a new era? Well, two historic title reigns ended. Of the seven championships defended at WrestleMania, only two were retained, and there were seven title changes. Yes, that's accurate. I'll explain my math at the end of this video. But for now, let's get right into it with my WrestleMania 40 review. Welcome to Silo Voice Wrestling on YouTube, the Silo Voice Wrestling podcast from Silo Voice Studios in Montreal. I'm Jason C. McLean. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell for notifications. Get notified of upcoming videos. Most of what I do here is wrestling opinion pieces. There will be occasional prediction videos and occasionally reviews when it's something important enough like WrestleMania. Now, I thoroughly love this show. Spoiler alert. Um, there was a lot of highlights, a lot of epic moments. And even though I was surprised quite a bit, I did get a lot of my predictions right as well, too. Won't harp on that. Also, this is April the 9th when I'm recording it Tuesday. So, yes, I have seen the Raw After Mania. So what happened on that show will be mentioned in some of my post-match discussions here. But now let's get right into it. On Saturday night, Triple H kicked things off, welcomed everybody to WrestleMania 40. And then we started right away with the Women's World Championship match, Rhea Ripley defending against Becky Lynch. This match really set the tone for WrestleMania Night 1 and actually the whole event. Uh, it was a great opener. We started off with uh, entrances from Becky all about her book, which was interesting. And uh, the band Motionless and Why Do Those Rhea's theme song basically wrapped or sang her down to the stage. It was fun. Very hard hitting. Very well worked on both sides. Of course, they're both extreme pros. I wouldn't ex expect anything less. Rhea looked great. great. Becky looked great. Becky even kicked out of a riptide. I think Charlotte's the only other one who's done that. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else, but not that many women have kicked out of the riptide, and Becky did. Of course, Mommy would remain on top. Rhea Ripley retained. I wasn't surprised to see Rhea win, but I wasn't sure she would win either. I predicted she'd win, but I really thought that Becky had a chance. The, the buildup in the last few weeks was really strong. And both of them put on a very strong performance, which is incredible if you realize that Becky had strep throat and really high fever. So that was not the ideal condition to perform a WrestleMania main event caliber match in, but she still did great. You didn't know it. Uh, I think Rhea definitely needed this victory, beating someone that people didn't know she was going to beat. Uh, it really solidifies her as the champion, the women's champion in WWE right now. Now, was this at the level of Rhea versus Charlotte at last year's Mania? No. That's a very high bar to pass, though. In fact, I consider it the second best match of uh, 2023, just slightly after uh, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. But that's in Montreal. I'm a little biased. But yeah, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't the kind of classic that match was. But it was definitely a good and memorable match. And of course, the important thing is it was a good match to kick off the show. As for where we're going to go from here, well, on the Raw After Mania, we did see that uh, Liv Morgan threw a chair at Rhea. So I think we're going Rhea and Liv. I think Becky might take a little time off because she is sick and she's basically been working very hard, but she's definitely going to come back. Maybe rematch with Rhea. Maybe they're, I don't think they're done yet. In the press conference, Rhea said they weren't done yet. So who knows? They both still, Becky continues to have a bright future in WWE and Rhea is now solidified as the women's champion, at least on Raw. We'll have to see about Bailey, we're going to come to that a little bit later. Talk about flying high. Well, the next match was definitely uh, a match with a lot of high spots. I'm, of course, talking about the six-pack tag team ladder match for Damian Priest and Finn Balor's Undisputed Tag Team Championships, which would, of course, become, through this match, the Raw Tag Team Championships and the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. They kind of telegraphed that was going to happen. Now, uh, Grayson Waller, and Austin Theory, a.k.a. A-Town Down Under, as I predicted, did win the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championships, but they definitely weren't going to win the other ones because uh, Waller took a very nasty bump through some ladders. That was, wow, that was, there were a lot of really intense bumps. J.D. McDonough, who wasn't even in the match, came in to cheat, took a really hard bump as well, too. Um, I mean, New Day put on a good show. New Catch Republic looked like they might take a title after a while, but, of course, it was... The awesome truth, our truth and Miz, 
who won the Raw Tag Team Championships. After we got the uh, huge crowd heat when uh, Theory and Waller won the SmackDown titles, we got the heartfelt, emotional, crowd-pleasing moment when R-Truth took forever to get to the top of that ladder and eventually pulled the belts down. It didn't look like he was going to do it. It looked like somebody was going to come up at one point, but I, I, we could just sense he was going to do it, and the crowd uh, went wild. Uh, the Philly crowd definitely was behind our truth as is every crowd. He's beloved. I'm not sure how long they're going to keep the titles for. At least they didn't lose it on the raw after mania. I think theory and Waller are going to pass the titles back and forth uh, with uh, probably the new catch Republic for a while. Um, and I think, I don't think judgment day is going to take it back. I think they're onto other things right now, but definitely I'm very happy. Everyone was very happy. And there were a lot of, uh, Really uh, scary bumps in this match. A lot of uh, tense moments. Damian Priest went up a broken ladder at one point. Uh, high risk, high reward. Definitely a very exciting uh, second match on the card. It was a mess, but it was a beautiful mess. Moving along, Rey Mysterio and Andrade versus Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Now, with this match, my prediction was way off. I didn't even have the participants right, but of course, nobody did because they uh, replaced Dragon Lee with Andrade at the last minute on SmackDown. And I was sure, that even before uh, Dragon Lee was taken out, probably by Carlito, that it was going to be Carlito who was going to turn on Ray out of jealousy for having picked Dragon Lee. And this time I thought he was going to turn on him for having picked Andrade to replace Dragon Lee instead of him. That didn't happen. I think it still might happen. They're definitely still telegraphing it. All of the LWO was out there. All of Legado del Fantasma was out there. Um, the match was fun. Uh, there were some uh, some good spots, some, some feel-good spots, like there was the 619. Of course, uh, who saved the day was former Philadelphia Eagles player Jason Kelsey and another player for the Eagles. I did not recognize these guys, but Pat McAfee did. My brother, who I was watching it with, definitely did as well, too. Um, that was a good bit of local crowd pleasing now was this the kind of match that you know the wrestling equivalent of could have been an email could have been on smackdown or in the pre-show yeah but i'm glad it made it to the main show because it was fun and it definitely did progress a major storyline that they've been progressing for the entire year the lwo versus legato and ray versus dom and also it affects a raw storyline now too because andrade is on raw and as we saw in the raw after mania uh, Dominic's going to take care of, uh, or Andrade or one of them is going to take care of the other next week. So yeah, it had a nice celebratory ending for the members of the LWO, along with some of their newfound Philadelphia football player friends. It also didn't last too long. I'm glad we had it. The next match though, main event, Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso. Do you like super kicks? Well, have I got a match for you? Yeah. Okay. There were a lot of kicks in this match and I have heard some of the other reactions to this match, saying it's the, the worst match on the card, saying that it, it didn't belong there. My judgment on this match isn't that harsh. I actually thought this was a good match, not a great match. And it definitely didn't live up to the build, the several decades build between the brothers or the uh, half a year long build since they left the bloodline that we've got on uh, SmackDown and on Raw. I don't know if it entirely paid off, but it was an enjoyable match to watch. There were a lot of kicks at first, but of course you kind of expect that with the Usos. Um, there was also some good character building. Of course, it was predictable character development. I don't think anyone thought for a second that Jimmy Uso really was uh, willing to get back with his brother when he said, take my hand, and he wasn't just trying to trick him. Of course, he was trying to trick him, but it makes sense for Jay to believe that. I mean, yes, logically, uh, he's a smart guy. He knows that that's not the case, but it is his brother, his twin brother. So decent story development. And I do think that this is the uh, the end of this particular feud, specifically because after being tricked, Jay came back and won the match. Yeah, sure. They could make this a trilogy of matches. Jay wins the first, Jimmy wins the second, Jay wins the third, the, the blow off match. I don't think they're going to do that. Or if they do that, they're going to do that in the future. I think the timing of this wasn't right because their particular aspect of the bloodline storyline had sort of been on the back burner, but who knows? They're both very good. Jay's really over as a baby face. Jimmy's still in Roman's shadow. Although now with, well, spoiler alert for the end now with Roman gone for a little while, 
Who knows? Maybe Jimmy will find his own. But still, I don't think this was a, a terrible match. I don't think it was as good as it could have been. I thought it was decent. We go from the decent to the sublime. Cinematic is probably the best way to describe Bianca Belair, Naomi, and Jade Cargill's entrance. And theatrical is probably the best way to describe the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, and Kairi Sane's entrance with Dakota Kai. The costumes, the makeup, everything was on point. This was something that caught your attention and didn't let it go. It was epic, to say the least. And of course, they got to the ring, and the performance kicked into high gear. The weather, by the way, was also part of this uh, performance, in particular the wind that you could see blowing through Kyrie Sane's hair. This is the first time Michael Cole mentioned on commentary the weather, the temperature, but obviously not the last. By the way, it was about 10 degrees Celsius for my fellow Canadians. Not that bad, but then again, I don't know if I'd want to sit in an open-air stadium for four hours in that weather. Anyways, we all knew what was happening here. This was primarily a showcase for Jade Cargill, and it succeeded at that. Also a showcase for Bianca Belair, who's always strong at WrestleMania, and for Naomi, who just returned. Not to say that the Kabuki Warriors or Dakota Kai were chumps in this one. They put up a good fight. There was a bit of back and forth, but ultimately, Jade dominated, got the pin, and the win. It was a spectacle. It was predictable, but I didn't care. I had a good time watching this match. It was definitely a WrestleMania caliber match. And then we got my match of the night for the Intercontinental Championship. The champion Gunther defending against Sami Zayn. Full disclosure, I'm very biased. I'm from Montreal. I'm a huge Sami Zayn fan. Now, I tried before this match. If you saw my prediction video, I, I said I'm picking Sami to win from my heart and from my head, but I had to do a little bit of a logical workaround to get there. I wasn't even sure that Sami was going to win. I, I really hoped he would, but I wasn't sure. And of course, when the match starts, I love how it started. Sammy was the only one who got a backstage uh, segment. He's talking to his wife, his little son. Tells his wife to take his son uh, to watch it on the TV. And she would come out to ringside. He then runs into Chad Gable. Chad tells him he's doing it on his own. And Sammy uh, walks up the ramp, the long ramp. Just before he's in gorilla position, he runs into Kevin Owens, who gives him a big hug and some encouragement. He goes out through Gorilla into the stadium, huge crowd pop, and the match starts. Um, the first part of the match was as I expected it to be. I mean, Sammy did try to chop Gunther at first, which is never a good idea. Of course, Gunther got him back, and there was a lot of Gunther dominating, Sammy making comebacks, but is it enough? I don't know. Then Gunther starts chiding his wife, who's in the front row. She starts yelling back. Uh, we get to the point where... Sammy's down, even Michael Cole and Pat McAfee and I think Corey Graves are telling Sammy to stay down. You know, like they're even starting to doubt the possibility of him winning at this point. He was a huge underdog, but of course Sammy makes a comeback, but then Gunther chops him down again. Uh, there's uh, Gunther hasn't pinned at one point after a, a few German suplexes. Kicks out at two. When he does it the second time, I thought, okay, Sammy's done. But no, Sammy kicked out again. I'm starting to believe, but I'm still not sure. Sammy's down. And then he starts making a comeback that's not his typical kind of comeback. He's sort of like shooting himself around. And then out of his bag of tricks, Sammy pulls a top rope brain buster and hits Gunther with it. Or rather, I should say these are from El Generico's bag of tricks, both the uh, sort of powering himself up, the hulking up, squirming around, and the top row brain buster. Those are moves Sammy hasn't done since he was in a different character, though he claims he never was that character. It was just some masked luchador that happens to have, you know, a red beard coming out. Anyways, that was back in Ring of Honor. Sammy had tried to do uh, some of these moves as Sammy Zayn in WWE, but he hasn't been able to pull off the brain buster. And I think this is the something different that Chad Gable was talking about. He had to go to a place where Gunther wasn't expecting him to go. He pulled it off. After that brain buster, Sammy hit a couple of huluva kicks from his usual bag of tricks. Michael Cole shouts, do you believe in miracles? One, two, three. The longest and some say the greatest intercontinental title reign in history was over. Sami Zayn was the intercontinental champion. And then some stuff happened with The Rock and Cody. Anyways, make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that is how I felt on the night. 
I was like, okay, that's it. That's my WrestleMania moment. I was so happy. I didn't, I really honestly hoped it would happen, but I wasn't sure. And then it happened. It was, it was excellent. Anyways. Um, okay. So uh, obviously Sammy's the new intercontinental champion. Where do we go from here? Well, Gunther, I think, is going to be in the world title picture very soon. And this was partially to allow to free him up to do that. As for Sammy, I saw the Raw after Mania and I found out that uh, Sammy is going to be defending the title against Chad Gable, a friendly challenge, in Montreal next week. Now, I live in Montreal. I'm going to that show. And I can tell you one thing. If there ever was a time that they wanted to turn Chad Gable heel and not risk the crowd in attendance cheering him or siding with him, this would be that time. Montreal crowds are very loud and sometimes we're kind of random, but not when it comes to our local heroes. We are going to be behind Sami Zayn no matter what. So I kind of think they are going to turn Chad Gable heel. I think Sami's going to retain the title, of course, but I think Chad might do some uh, some nasty stuff if he loses after the match and to set up a feud. And believe me, if he starts attacking Sami, the crowd is going to let him know that he is a heel. So I think that's going to happen. I really like Chad Gable. I kind of like him as a as a baby face, but you know what? Him heel Chad versus Sammy could be a very interesting feud. Anyways, that's now back on the night though. Wow. An incredibly well-paced, well-told story through physicality, emotion, and even not even that many promos to build it up. They pulled it off. This was an incredible match. This is definitely my WrestleMania moment. But of course, the main event wasn't bad either. The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. The winner would determine the stipulation for Sunday night's main event. It started off in the ring, but soon went into the crowd. Of course, before that, we got the entrances. Uh, they did take a while. Roman, Cody, and Seth didn't do their real entrances. They were saving those for the... Uh, the following night, because they all had their own singles matches on the following night. The Rock, though, his entrance, he was in a, a a rock symbol, a Brahma Bull symbol, lit on fire, it seemed, and he had his championship, and I remembered when he got down to the ring, oh yeah, he got that at the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony, it's the um, Muhammad Ali's widow gave him the People's Championship, that's going to play into things a little bit later, going forward, uh, but anyways, the match started in the ring. Uh, when they were going out to the crowd, the referee was going to count them out. But then Rock said, don't count me out. You count me out, you're fired. But of course, you kind of need a winner from this match. It's not bloodline rules, but a double count out doesn't do anyone any good. And they were all out of the ring. Cody and Ro uh, Roman paired off. were fighting uh, on the entranceway. And Rock and Seth went into the crowd. It was, quite a, uh, it was very grounded. But it was a, a pretty intense fight. At one point, Rock spit water all over Seth. That must have been harsh in his freezing cold weather. Another thing that was harsh, though, for uh, for Seth was the fact that he definitely showed that his leg was injured again, uh, or he was sore and he was having trouble walking. At one point, they were they Rock and Roman definitely kept attacking the injured leg, which is something that we were all thinking would play into things for the next night. Um, yeah, Seth really took this harsh. Uh, at one point, though, they did manage to do a double pedigree on Rock and Roman. But eventually, after missing his first people's elbow attempt, after it being stopped, the Rock hit Cody with a rock bottom, the people's elbow for the win. My first takeaway from this is that the Rock's in ring shape. He, he, he looked like the Rock of old. I know that he uh, got winded after uh, giving a rock bottom to Jinder Mahal, but he definitely went through the training that he said he was going through, and he was ready. He's a competitor. Not only does he have a great physique, which he's been developing over the years, but he's definitely ready to wrestle, and he was definitely a solid performer here. Of course, a lot of the match was very grounded uh, because the other people don't necessarily want to risk things with high spots tonight and not be able to compete the next night or perform the next night. Um, also, I even though uh, he was selling it really well and he was looking angry, looking hurt, you could tell that Seth Rollins really loved the fact that he was about to lock up with The Rock at WrestleMania. Cody uh, played it a little bit better. Yeah, he went right back into character, but you could definitely tell. 
this was a, a really a really good match. It was it, I wouldn't say technically it was the best. It was an excellent main event for the night, though. It had massive star power. It was good to see the rock like the rock of old, although a heel version. Uh, everyone put on a great show. It was a great way to close the night. Obviously, we ended on a sad note with uh, for the the good guys, being that being that tomorrow would be bloodline rules. But of course, those of us who think a little behind the scenes know that we want bloodline rules and we want Cody to win under those circumstances, or at least I did. So I left this night of WrestleMania definitely feeling very satisfied. Night two uh, kicked off instead of with Triple H with Stephanie McMahon. We did see her at the Hall of Fame, but she didn't say anything. So this was definitely a surprise and a really pleasant surprise, too. Despite what her father allegedly did, she is not responsible for that. And she's definitely beloved backstage by people in the locker room and definitely by the audience. And it's great that they could all show her that as she came out brimming with confidence and welcomed everyone to night two of WrestleMania in the Paul Levesque era. Well, she said the Triple H era, but. People also called it the Paul Levesque era. Anyways, her introduction led right into the World Heavyweight Championship match with the champion Seth Freakin' Rollins, defending against the 2024 Men's Elimination Chamber match winner, Drew McIntyre. The entrances were something else, and a really fun way to kick off night two. Drew came out with people bearing swords, bagpipe players, the whole deal. Of course, Seth overdid that with some sort of Mardi Gras-themed entrance with people dancing around the ring waiting for the ring introductions i have no idea what the theme of this was but uh it definitely seemed to jive with seth rollins and the whole time i was just thinking i do hope he's going to take that outfit off to wrestle and he's got his normal wrestling gear underneath it. well he did and the match itself well, it was good it was uh drew started off right away trying to win with a claymore taking advantage of seth's injury uh, went back and forth. They all did their big moves. There were stomps. There were claymores, uh, pedigrees, the whole deal. At one point, though, uh, Drew actually uh, leaned up against some people in the audience, took a photo, and uh, tweeted it, or x it, or whatever you call it now. And that actually was shared onto his social media. And it said, like, a board at work or something like that. There were people in the crowd who had the, uh, the CM Punk tombstone uh, thing on their shirt. CM Punk was really fun in commentary, basically dissing Drew most of the time, uh, saying he's basically taking advantage of a, an injured man. And eventually, uh, which I think is really the right call, Drew won. He won clean in the middle of the ring. Your new heavyweight champion, Drew McIntyre, for about five minutes. Instead of just celebrating, he decided to trash talk CM Punk, who eventually had enough. Tripped him on the announce table, took off his brace, hit him with it, and then Damian Priest music. Priest comes down, cashes in his money in the bank briefcase right away, one South of Heaven choke slam later, and the new world heavyweight champion, Damian Priest, as CM Punk looked on, applauding, obviously very pleased. Now, I was expecting a cash-in attempt, but I didn't think it would be successful. I wasn't even sure it would go all the way. I thought the match was just what it needed to be. It was a fun match, fast-paced match with a lot of finishes. Um, and it had the right result because I think Seth needs to take some time off now. He had a great run as champion. He was respectful to Drew as he left, the whole deal. Seth's going to come back later. That's another story. But... Um, I think what happened after the match, the cash-in was absolutely brilliant. It, you didn't think it was going to happen like that, but it makes perfect sense that it did. Of course, Drew was obsessed with CM Punk, and that's his downfall. That's what allowed uh, a priest to come in. And Priest, people have been criticizing him online for not cashing in, basically saying he's the worst money in the bank holder. But he cashed in at the most logical time on the biggest stage. He's now won a world championship at WrestleMania. That's amazing. And it was quick. It was great. And this just makes things go in a very interesting direction. Already on the Raw after Mania, um, Drew was trying to get back into uh, contention. He was uh, part of a 
a fatal four way. And of course, who helps him? Who helps out Jey Uso at the very last minute? CM Punk by pulling Drew's leg. It's not so much that he was helping Jey Uso. He did celebrate uh, with Jey after doing the little gesture, but mainly it was to screw over Drew one more time. Wow. Drew and Punk is going to be a great match when we get to it, when Punk's ready to go. And I think he seems a little bit more ready to go than he was before. I mean, sure, I don't think he can take bumps yet, but he can definitely do offensive moves. And I was blown away and really happy. And this was an excellent way to start night, a day two of Mania. It set the tone for the entire night. Next up was the street fight between Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits versus the Final Testament, Carrie and Cross and the Authors of Pain. To be honest, I didn't think I would enjoy this match, at least not to the level that I did. The reason I did enjoy it, though, was because, um, namely because of special guest referee Bubba Ray Dudley and guest commentator Snoop Dogg. I think this was a match that definitely needed those bells and whistles, and this was Philadelphia, so Bubba Ray was definitely over as a referee. He looked a bit odd in that referee outfit, but that's a whole other story. But of course, um, at the end of the match, uh, or near the end of the match, he starts arguing with Karrion Cross over a count. So he puts on the Bubba glasses, and Bubba's there, and it's it's a it's a fun end to it. Uh, he encourages the Street Profits uh, to do an old Dudley Boys move, and uh, they all say with well, the Street Profits Lashley and uh, Bubba say get the tables, and of course all the baby faces celebrate. Lashley, the Profits, B Fab. Um, I'm still not really sold on this feud. I hope they go on to other things. Uh, Carrying Cross, I'm seeing more potential in him. Uh, the authors of pain are definitely tough. And uh, Paul Ellering just, just seems to be there. Scarlet's Scarlet. I think they could go on to other things, but because of all the bells and whistles that they added to this match, I definitely did enjoy it. Next up was LA Knight, yeah, versus AJ Styles. Very physical match. One of the roughest matches on the night. Both in the ring and even on the uh, announce table. And of course, the uh, LA Knight did that thing that I love. He banged AJ Styles' head into the announce table as the crowd chanted, yeah, 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 with each hit. AJ uh, got some offense in as well, too. Honestly, this is one of the few uh, non-title singles matches in all of WrestleMania for both days, and I think it definitely delivered. I was not that excited for this match originally, uh, but then over the past few weeks, they've done a lot to really build it, to get me invested in it. Um, and I'm, of course, really glad that LA Knight won because now they can move on to something else. It was a good uh, way to get both these guys on the card. Solid match. But yeah, now I'm hoping that LA Knight goes after maybe, I don't know, the United States Championship. And speaking of the United States Championship, we had a match. Logan Paul defending against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. After uh, KO met Sammy backstage, Sammy said, now it's your turn. He started walking to the ring, came back got a cart with his name on it, and then he decided to give his opponent, Randy Orton, a lift. That was a fun bit of camaraderie that, of course, would be short-lived because, of course, it was a triple threat match. For a while, they were both ganging up on Logan Paul, but eventually Orton, predictably, was the first one to go after KO. KO stopped him, didn't take the RKO. Eventually, KO did take an RKO and actually kicked out of the RKO. I was wondering if that might have been an error if Logan Paul was late or something because... Having Kevin Owens randomly kick out of an RKO and then not win the match seemed a bit odd. Uh, of course, there were brass knuckles. There was the prime bottle with another one of uh, Logan Paul's associates in it. And eventually, through devious tactics and getting uh, the two baby faces to fight, as I predicted, Logan Paul did get the win on Kevin Owens. I'm sure the reason they did a triple threat match like they did a fatal four-way at Royal Rumble was they don't want to put the title on Randy Orton but they don't want him to take a, a pin so soon after his comeback. Uh, I enjoyed this match. It was fun. It's really fun to boo Logan Paul. It doesn't bother me that uh, Orton or uh, Owens didn't win. I couldn't see either of them really holding the U.S. championship right now. I'm looking forward to uh, Logan Paul's next feud, where I hope he does ultimately lose the, uh, lose the title. And maybe we'll have a feud between Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Who knows if Orton turns heel, that would set him up for a nice heel feud against Cody Rhodes for, well, more on that later. Anyways, good match, solid match, fun match, perfectly positioned on the card, a good addition to WrestleMania. Next, 
we had one of the emotional cores of the event for the WWE Women's Championship. The champion Io Sky defending against the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble match winner, Bailey. Of course, the story here is that Bailey is much more than the Women's Royal Rumble winner. She's Io's former friend and mentor, faction mate or stable mate. She started damage control. She helped Io win, uh, cash in to win the Women's Championship. And the story of betrayal and I guess revenge from betrayal. And the okay, the entrances were um uh, Eo's entrance was not as intense as it is sometimes. It was still a good WrestleMania entrance. Bailey's entrance was a bit odd to say the least. For some reason it was Egyptian themed. I don't know. Bailey's got a different style going on, kind of like a mix between uh Bailey the Hugger, uh the role model and uh damage control, but a sort of a baby face version of it new theme too it's it's interesting this is her, her new baby face character she's reinventing herself but of course the match itself was a really good match and i really like the fact that damage control didn't come down to interfere because i mean that would have obviously brought in uh you know naomi and maybe jade maybe even bianca to take them out this wasn't about that this was about two competitors in the ring and if eo was going to win she was going to do so uh without help because she really is a strong competitor showcasing her as a strong competitor and as a strong champion, something they haven't really done that much lately. But of course, eventually, uh, I mean, Eo would uh, kick out of a Bailey to Belly, but eventually, Bailey would hit an elbow, a rose plant, Bailey to Belly, one, two, three, new WWE women's champion. Of course, the crowd was really behind Bailey. They were even singing, Whoa, oh, Bailey, would you be my girl? Which I thought only crowds in England sang, but I guess. There were enough British people there. I know enough British like YouTubers were definitely at this show. Um, of course, Philadelphia maybe adapted that as well too because we all watch videos. It was such a good feel-good moment after a really good match. Yeah, Eosky's title reign might have not been the best, but she she's probably going to have a rematch. Uh, she's definitely a, a top contender now, and this was definitely a worthy match for a main event. And while I'm really glad... It wasn't overbooked for storyline reasons. I think another reason it might have not been so overbooked is because of its placement on the card and because of what came next. For the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, the champion Roman Reigns defending against the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble match winner, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, Bloodline Rules. Cody had an excellent entrance. He had the uh, American Nightmare mask on. He was next to his wife, Brandy Rhodes. It was definitely epic. Roman Reigns' entrance was equally epic with an actual live orchestra and choir playing his theme song without a recording. As this was a Bloodline Rules match, the in-ring action soon gave away to outside-the-ring action. They fought in the same production area. Rock and uh, Seth had fought in the previous night. They fought back in the ring. They got kendo sticks from under the ring. At one point, Roman got booed for putting back a table that Cody had pulled out. There were uh, false finishes. It was like a, a solid singles match if it was also a street fight. We got almost a full match out of that. Uh, but then, of course, the fireworks started. And by fireworks, I don't mean literal fireworks. I mean run-ins. Jimmy Uso was first to stop a pin attempt uh, by uh, Cody. But of course, Jey Uso showed up and the two fought and then took a really nasty looking dive off the stage onto some tables. It didn't take too long for Solo Sokoa to show up, of course, stopping a crossroads attempt with a spike, similar to the ending of last year's main event. He didn't wear a hoodie this time. I guess uh, he got sick of people saying, dude, we know you're the guy in the hoodie. Him and Roman attacked Cody back and forth. Cody kept kicking out. And then who should show up but John Cena. He quickly took care of Solo. And then the rock music hit. The final boss showed up. Cena and the rock stared each other down. Two great rivals meeting one more time. Cena started with You Can't See Me, but Rock quickly gave him the rock bottom. And then the shield music hit. Uh, Seth Rollins would show up. Roman Reigns would knock him out before he could get to the rock. More on him later. But then, of course, Rock standing alone in the ring. We hear a dong. The lights go down. They come back up. And none other than The Undertaker 
is standing behind the rock. Rock turns around. Taker gives him a choke slam. Lights go out. Taker's gone. Roman gets up first. But instead of hitting Cody with a chair, he sees Seth Rollins in the old Shield outfit and decides to return the favor from several years ago, hits Rollins instead. So basically, Roman couldn't ignore the uh, temptation to close that old wound that he took his eyes off the prize and hit Seth instead. Seth, as he told Cody, was his shield against the bloodline. Seth actually, if you think about it, sacrificed himself, his world heavyweight championship, and his body for the greater good. That's a real hero arc. And then Cody stopped a spear attempt, hit one crossroads, hit another crossroads, struggled to but hit a third crossroads, cover one, two, three, and new, undisputed, WWE champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. That's what Samantha Irvin said with a cracking voice. I noticed she didn't say universal. She did say universal when it was Roman, but I guess they're dropping the universal part of it now. This is just the WWE championship and we have the world championship, just like the women's belts. But uh, semantics aside, this match for a lot of it was this overbooked masterpiece. There were so many people showing up. I did not expect the Undertaker. I was expecting Stone Cold, especially when I saw Cena. It really fit with that uh, image of the bus from when Rock was uh, beating Cody outside in the rain in Chicago. I think maybe they probably did have a plan to try and get Stone Cold. That's why they set that up, but they couldn't. So they got Cena and The Undertaker instead. But still, The Undertaker kind of seems more like a final boss for the final boss than uh, than Stone Cold would. So it kind of works. And then the ending of the match, that was beautiful. It was the feel-good moment of the century the longest, well, of the mo modern era, modern wrestling, the longest uh, championship reign, the forever reign of Roman Reigns was now over, and it was time to celebrate. Cody didn't want to celebrate alone. Sami Zayn showed up, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, L.A. Knight, basically victims of Bloodlines past or a good chunk of the babyface locker room were there to celebrate with them. They lifted them up. And Cody got on the mic and he actually invited out well, Triple H and Bruce Pritchard, who some of you know as Brother Love. I know as a guy who hosts a podcast and who's actually a key a figure behind the scenes in WWE. He has been for years on and off. And he also uh, shook the hand or hugged uh, Nick Khan, who's actually the CEO of WWE. It was a bit of a behind the curtain moment, but it was great. It was beautiful. It was, it was honestly the perfect ending to the match, the storybook ending, closing this story, starting another. Especially seeing as at one point they weren't even going to have Cody in the main event. Having him win it? That says something. Now, maybe they had a plan for him to win it originally when he was going to be in it, and then they thought they'd push it off for The Rock, but they got a way better WrestleMania, a way better main event, uh, two great main events, and a way better story than they could have possibly hoped for. And Cody overcame all odds and is now the champion. I was very satisfied with the ending of this WrestleMania. So before I forget, well, actually I did forget, this is an insert. How do they get to seven title changes? Well, let's see. Undisputed WWE, Women's WWE, Intercontinental, that's three. Add to that the Raw Tag Team Championship and the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Now we're up to five. And the World Heavyweight title changed hands twice. So in total, seven title changes. So that was WrestleMania 40, or WrestleMania XL. I do love the Roman numerals. I'm glad that they're not only not afraid to show their age, they brought the numerals back. Probably not for next year. We'll see. But of course, on the Raw after WrestleMania, uh, The Rock interrupted Cody Rhodes' celebration and basically said, I'll be back. Well, basically, he's going away to do a movie and he's going to come back and he's coming for Cody Rhodes. Wow, that's going to be a, a program I think that nobody thought that we were going to have, but we are going to have that. Maybe Cody and uh, Rome, uh, sorry, Cody and Rock for SummerSlam, and then Rock and Roman at Mania, or Cody and Rock for this for the Mania 41, and then Rock and Roman at Mania 42. I'm sure Roman's going to take some time off, probably come back. 
who knows, he might turn babyface. I think that this WrestleMania not only closed the book on the old era, it opened up a new story, or several new stories, and a new era as well, too. Um, my highlight is still, of course, Sami Zayn beating Gunther. But of course, the most memorable match was that stellar main event, Cody finally, finally finishing his story. And the rest of the matches, some of them were quite good. Some of them were solid. A few were okay. Could have been a SmackDown or a Raw, but but no, they, they all belonged on the card. I think this was a really good, solid card. And I'm really looking forward uh, well to my show. By the way, next week, Raw is going to be in Montreal, where I live. I think I mentioned that earlier, and I'm definitely going to be there. I'm going to try and do maybe a report from there. Who knows? Maybe do something live. Definitely do a report after. Uh, talking about the experience. I've seen WWE live. Well, I've seen a, a house show, the holiday tour, and I've seen uh, a SmackDown, the one before Elimination Chamber. So they're selling out. I'm I'm not sure if they're going to sell out our show, but I, I think they very well might. Um, I'm definitely very excited, and I'm going to bring that content to you. So what do you think of this WrestleMania? Do you think it's really uh, the beginning of a new era or the end of an old era? You agree with, I think most people, this is the Renaissance era. What were your favorite matches? What were your least favorite matches? Did you agree with my uh, opinions? Let me know in the comments. Um, of course, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell for notifications. Follow at Silo Wrestling on X, at SVS Reviews on Instagram and Facebook, and me at Jason C. McLean on X and Instagram. And I'll catch you sometime next week with a report from a live Raw. For Silo Voice Studios in Montreal, I'm Jason C. McLean.